up, gang? Hey, it's Colton Lindsay here, live right on my podcast, uh, the WGR Live. I haven't been on for a couple of weeks, but I'm super stoked to be on here because I got a guest for you today. We're gonna see if we can get him popped on. His name is Danny, okay? Danny, I met, I met him in uh, Florida, just barely, and his story was so freaking amazing. I, I wanted to get on here and I, I wanted for you guys to hear his story. So let me just invite him, get him on. And if you guys are hopping on, make sure to drop in the comments whether you're watching live or whether you're watching replay. So if you're a live watcher, drop an L, or if you're a replay watcher, drop an R. And also just put in there the notes here uh, if you can hear me. Yeah. Let's see if it gets on, be patient. Prospectingalliance.com. Danny, can you hear me? Let's see. Let's try this again, Danny. It says it's adding you, but it's not bringing you on. So I'm gonna, oh, there it is, it's connecting. I about exit out. Hey, Danny, can you hear me, man? Yeah, yeah, loud I can and hear, clear. Can you hear me? Are you guys watching uh, on there in the notes? Put a yes if you can hear us or a no if you cannot hear us. And um, so we're gonna get going with this. Appreciate you guys being to the podcast. I'm super excited today. Uh, to interview Danny because I, I met you just a couple weeks ago in Florida. I know we've been friends on Facebook, but I didn't really freaking know your story. I meet you here at the Tony Robbins event. I hear your story. I see how fucking awesome you are. And I'm like, dude, I want to be able to interview on my podcast and learn more about you just because it's so intriguing, right? So for you guys watching, I dropped a comment down in the comments down below. Go to theprospectingalliance.com. So we're enrolling right now. Open enrollment for the Prospecting Alliance. Um, and if you guys want to learn more about real estate coaching and training, go to fearlessagent.com. That's fearlessagent.com. But Danny, so here's, let's just do this. In 90 seconds or so, um, and then we'll get into to asking questions. In 90 seconds or so, give a background of where you were with your life to where you're at today. So uh, I grew up out in uh, Los Angeles, California. Um, and, you know, I, I had a, a little bit of a different background growing up. I was growing up around gangs and drugs growing up. Um, pretty typical and common out there. And uh, pretty much in a short story, at 18 years old, I, I, caught, I, I was incarcerated and convicted for conspiracy to distribute methamphetamine. And I was sentenced to 120 months. Um, and I've been out about five years now, and I've been, you know, successful in real estate. So 120 months, that's 10 years in prison. So did you yeah. serve a full 10 years in prison? Um, eight, eight and a half, half years in prison. Okay, so let's, let's, go back yeah. to, let's go back to kind of your youth. You said you grew up around gangs. What is that, what is that like? For most people here, they, they don't know what that's like. Like when you say you grew up a little bit different, like what, what, <laughs> what is gang life like? Um, you know, I mean, just, um, you know, selling drugs, doing drugs, um, and, and gangs just hanging out with guys that were just up to no good. Uh, you know, from stealing and, and robbing and, and, you know, all sorts Any of stuff. Any physical violence going on with these gangs? Um, of, okay. it's, of course. So of you course. got into that because, I mean, you, it's just kind of where you grew up. That's kind of your, your, your environment. You become your environment, environment right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you started selling meth right. and I, was it other drugs or just meth that you were selling? So it's pretty much started off with weed, you know, started smoking weed, started drinking, and then uh, from weed, it just escalated. I really never uh, done too much drugs, but um, I smoked a lot of weed growing up and then um, just started selling it, started selling weed, started selling meth, and, uh, and then just Why did you start selling drugs? There. Like, was, is it a lucrative business or was it just because there was an opportunity? Did you make a lot of money doing it? Just, uh, well, it's never, it's never enough money. Uh, for the time, you know, for, for, for being in jail. But um, it was just, uh, that was what we did. That was the environment and I wanted to make money and I wanted fast what, money. What, what were you thinking when you were, when you were arrested and then you were sentenced to 10 years in prison? Um, so I didn't, I didn't really realize how serious the federal system was um, at first. I didn't know that there was mandatory minimums and I didn't know how, how severe the the amount of time that you can get for, for being incarcerated for, you know, what I did. Um, so I didn't really think that was a big issue and I was going to serve that much time. Um, but, you know, I was for sure scared, for sure scared that, you know, it was my first time being in jail 
and um, and just the fact that you, once I was in there, I started realizing yeah, we got you loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you know, I was for sure scared. I mean, didn't know what to expect. So, so here you are. You're in prison. You're 18 years of age, um, and you got out in eight and a half years. What were some of the discoveries while you were in prison for eight and a half years? So, well, you know, it was, it was the biggest blessing to tell you the truth. Um, you know, it, every, everything happens for a reason, I believe. And um, if it wasn't for serving that amount of time or, or going to prison, I wouldn't be who I am today, which um, so I'm very grateful and very appreciative for everything that I've been through. And um, at 18, you know, I, I was just turning 18 and I want to say maybe one or two years is into, into uh, serving my sentence. I, you know, really much realized that I had to really change who I was and, and be someone different than who I was uh, than coming in. So um, I first picked up a book, Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And uh, another one was uh, Unleash the Power Within by Tony Robbins. And uh, through those two books, it led me through a lot of uh, self, self uh, I would say, you know, a lot of personal development, a lot of um, just uh, personal development, self-growth books. That's pretty much all I was reading. So um, if it wasn't for those materials in there at an early time in my, in my, um, my sentence, you know, it would have changed everything of how I served my sentence because that really helped me out with, um, you know, being stressed, being depressed, um, growing up in prison, you know, dealing with all the, the, the stuff so that you, happens. So you in picked there up too. Think and Go Rich and Unleash the Power Within. Where did you come up with those books? They just, did they have a library there? Or just I found them. No, I found them on uh, some, well, first of all, the one guy gave me the Think and Go Rich book and uh, the other one I just found it. And uh, just came across. <laughs> tell me, you know, some treasure. Tell me that's not a fucking gift from God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Huge, huge gift. And 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 all these authors, I mean, they were like teachers for me. They they were pretty much they they, like what I would say, they helped me go through my sentence with me from all the reading material that. Um, so you know, so I learned you from two, that. one to two years in, you discovered Think I Go Rich and Unleash the Power Within. Um, or is that is that what it was? Unleash the Power. What is mm -hmm. okay. Cool. Yes. So, so then yeah. you, what other books, well, tell me, walk us through the next six and a half years because you discovered, you know, this, this uh, personal development. What did you just commit to for the next six and a half years while you were in prison? And so when, when I first picked up those books, I was just, I was astonished and like amazed with the material within it. I was like, um, like I just found God, you know, I never read anything. First of all, I, I didn't know how to read. Uh, I didn't go to school. So these were the first books I ended up pretty much reading. Uh, so from there, you know, Zig Ziglar, Les Brown, Tony Robbins, Napoleon Hill, uh, pretty much any South Health and personal development book I pretty much read. Um, and then also too, I was, you know, I was on a high to become better than how I, than how I came in. And so every day, if it was fitness, if it was spiritual, if it was mentally, any, every day I was just trying to get better every day. And, um, you know, I would go to school in there as well where I was able to get my degree. So um, I was just on a mission to what, get better and become better. What was better the environment like every in, single day. In prison, in, prison in Los Angeles? Uh, was, I pretty much served a lot of my time okay. outside of uh, Los Angeles. So I pretty much, I've been to a fair amount of okay. prison, uh, prisons. And, um, you know, it was tough. It was tough growing up, uh, what I would say basically in prison just because I was around a lot of people that were, you know, two, yeah. three, four times my age. And, and, uh, and I had to grow up pretty quick. Um, so I pretty much, you know, I pretty much lost my, my juvenile years. And, um, and it, it was hard. It was, it was stressful. It was depressing at times. I would wake up. Uh, I would be dreaming of the out, like being outside and I would wake up and I'll be in a, in a cell, uh, you know, dealing with the whole, you know, prison politics mm -hmm. stuff as well. Um, you know, being incarcerated in the hole and, and not getting any showers and all kinds of stuff. So it was a, a pretty So for those of you guys experience. that are watching um, right now, make sure to do a favor because I know you're on your mobile device. Turn your notifications on so you see the other live streams that I do with podcasts and make sure to click the share button so that other people can see. I think it's really important. What I, I love is, is like, I mean, I don't love the fact that you're in prison. That sucks, but you said it's the greatest blessing, right? So let's talk about the other end of prison. So you went exactly. through prison and you, you focused on personal development and you leave prison and now what? You leave prison and then what happens? 
so you know i um uh, i was released in 2000 mid 2012 and um so i've been out for almost six years and um it was it was everything was new to me i didn't know how to email anybody i didn't know how to ride the bus i didn't know how to text i didn't know how to type i didn't know how to do anything um didn't have a job never worked in my life so this was In sales barely started my life and um you know just uh just the way i how i had a lot of uh what i would say back then were positive peers were people that were selling drugs i started seeking you know positive peers of stuff that i wanted to do which was real estate and um and i started looking for well first of all i had multiple jobs i worked in construction landscaping uh trucking I pretty much did all the physical labor jobs, and um, and and then after that, I, I went and tried to get my real estate license, and and then well, like within 12 months of um, 2015, I was so, granted so my real estate you, license. So you you're out in 2012. By 2015, you had your real estate license, which is interesting because I don't even know mm -hmm. how that like in the state of Utah, there's I mean it would have been 2018, five years, mm -hmm. right? Minimum before for because you're you're a convicted felon. Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, minimum five years. Correct. And so yeah. how did that how did that happen within such a quick time frame you were able to get licensed in the state of California? You, you know, it's just putting it out there, man. Putting it if you know, declaring something that you want and you're gonna make it happen. And I would just literally visualize the whole process of me having my real estate license in my head. You know, because if we can make it real in our head, it will become reality sooner or later. And uh, every day I would just visualize me having my real estate license, me you know, receiving the letter in the mail from the BRE that I was going to get my real estate license. And uh, it did take a lot of work and it did take a lot of effort on my side to um, challenge the BRE. But I know, uh, you know, with God's help and everything, I was able to. Um, so get I think, my real I think that's license. important. So obviously visualize and, and set the intention of what you want to create, but then you got to take mm -hmm. some action. So you, you said you had to challenge the of division of real estate. How did you like, what did that look like challenging them? So, well, you know, my criminal, my, my case wasn't um, violent. So it was just, uh, I had to pretty much let them know that, you know, I was young and, and what I did was, was something I did a long time ago. And I had to show them a lot of stuff that I was doing. So um, a lot of volunteer work, which I, I actually, for the last three, four years, I've been speaking in juvenile halls and I go to continuation schools and I go to high schools and I, and I get back and I talk to kids and I pretty much just share my story. And, um, so I was able to share with them all the stuff that I've been doing in the last years and show them that I changed. And they, you know, they were able to grant me real estate. So license. you get your license 2015. What did you, how'd you get started? I mean, cause texting's new, email's new, everything's new, right? Everything. Life, Life is new, you know, hanging out. Yeah. Everything. It was just, um, it was crazy, man. It's been, it's been, it's been one heck of a journey. I'll tell you that. Um, I, I, I can say I, for so long, I, you know, I was not seeing any light at the end of the tunnel. It was just dark. Um, and it was just, it was really tough. It was really stressful. But, you know, just with the amount of drive and ambition I had, like, I wasn't going to give up. I didn't give you know, I didn't care. I wasn't going to give up. I was going to make it happen. And um, so in 2014, I was, I found a mentor on Instagram and I reached out to him and, and, and he was the top producing real estate agent. I reached out to him and, um, and that was who I yeah. talked to, I was telling you about was Kevin. And I worked, and I worked for him and I learned from him and, um, and I was able to shadow him and, 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 um, and then through him, you know, I was able to meet a lot of other people. So that's in, Kevin Sturdivant. I did a podcast with him like a month or two ago. So mm -hmm. you guys can go check that out. It's on iTunes. It's super awesome conversation. That dude is a phenomenal guy. So you got hooked up with another blessing, uh, from Kevin just through Instagram and what did your first year in real estate look like? My first year, I think it was like 18 homes around there. Um, so, you know, I was just constantly working. I was, I was very driven and very hungry. And, um, you know, this is, this is what I was pretty much waiting my whole life for to do to get into real estate. So, um, it, it, and, you know, and through Kevin and through all these other mentors, I was able to meet all these great people that, you know, to learn from and grow from. So I was able to be, have so much success. So what does that look like as far as paid revenue? How old, first of all, how old were you in 2015? 2015. So 30 so years old. I was 30 years old. 29, 29 years like old. 29, yeah. Like you're 29. barely just learning what yeah. is out here as far as life because you've been in prison life. for half, life. you know, for a yeah. decade. 
um, and, and you go and sell 18 houses your first year in real estate, what did that make you money wise? Um, that was like my first year, I think it was like 63 Which, or 73,000. 70 grand and after then, being in uh, prison is, is a freaking fortune, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Sweet man. Yep. So, so yep. now let's fast forward today. What are you yeah. working on with your business? You're in the, you're three years, almost four years in real estate now. What are you at today with your business and your career? Mm -hmm. So, um, as far as like, you know, I'm tracked to like do around 250, around 250, 260. And um, I just really been focusing on on just basically development side of the business is what my, my passion has been. So um, just working with a lot of so new six years ago, right you're leaving prison after a 10 year sentence. Mm -hmm. And today you're earning two hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars a year. You're giving back to to the youth yeah. and the community and and, and and speaking about your story. And you're still doing other things. Like I met you at, at Date with Destiny, right? Tell us about what else you're doing to continue to grow. Because yeah. it, it, it sounds like your growth didn't stop by getting out of prison. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, I've, I've always been hungry. I've always been driven. And, and I just, I, you know, at one, and when I was in prison, I was just be reading these books. And I was like, well, one day I'm going to, you know, be able to, to listen to the stuff on, on Audible and, be able to, to attend these seminars. So I'm always constantly learning and growing. If it's, you know, within myself, if it's um, like Tony Robbins, you know, I've done all the Tony Robbins, you know, landmark education and a lot of other real estate uh, coaching as well. But, um, you know, it, it's just, it's been an amazing, it's been a blessing. And, and um, everything I've been wanting, you know, has all started from visualizing or writing it down um, and just writing it down on paper and writing it down and um, writing it down every day and just visualizing the process so, of every day and obviously doing the work. So you fed the and, hunger. You, know, you, I mean, you really you fed the hunger over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And like just um, like being, you know, I'm, you know, I'm very blessed. I live, I have a nice. Yeah. Like ocean view looking over the ocean, but you know, that's something that, you know, I manifested. I, I told myself I wanted to live over looking over the ocean one day, and I just didn't realize. You know, How that big it were the cells happened. in prison? How big were the cells? I don't even know, man. <laughs> you could fit maybe two bunks. <laughs> so like, like two bunks, six maybe? by ten or something you know? <laughs> like that, sixty square feet. Yeah. You go from staring yeah. at a at a cinder, cinder block wall in a jail cell, prison cell, to to a view of the ocean. And that happened because you, you created the visualization, you created it, you wrote it down, you created your life, your, created your life. life, your show, your reality. Exactly. But what I love about this story, if exactly. you guys watching or listening in is like, it doesn't get much more difficult of a space than being in fucking prison, right? Like you, you lose complete freedom mm -hmm. in prison. And here you are at, what are you, 33, 34 years old now? 33 years of age, living with the ocean view, making $250,000 and abundant opportunity in front of you. And you're, you're freaking young still, dude. You're freaking young. I, mm -hmm. Just beginning. Just beginning. Just beginning. <laughs> so talk to us about you've been yeah. to Landmark and Tony Robbins. How many events have you been to since you've got out of prison that have really helped shape you? Man, I, I think I have spent – probably over a hundred thousand dollars on, on personal growth from, from seminars. So when you first coaching. started, did you have the money to do it and or how did you? <laughs> no, I put on a credit card. I signed up, uh, 2015. I think I signed up for coaching. Signed awesome. Up with Mike Ferry. So your first one, your first coaching program was Mike Ferry. Yeah. At what point did yeah. you get into, yeah. um, like landmark? I think a year after that, I probably got into Landmark and then started doing Tony. What? So, you know, a lot of Keller Williams coaching too through the, through um, okay, a, lot of, you know, cool. a lot of the events and that they so have. And so what Tony events have you been through? Mm -hmm. Everyone. Been to every, yeah, everyone and now you're going through a second time. Well, because, yeah, because this was your second date with Destiny, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Signed up for UPW in March out here in L.A., so um, – you know, it's just like between Tony and Napoleon Hill, like those were the two teachers that, you know, came into my life at, yeah. uh, at a time where it was tough. You know, I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to do when I got out. I didn't know what I was going to do inside. I didn't know where my life was going to be. And um, those two books, those two authors, those two teachers. So I imagine your gratitude for the experience you're experiencing now is just 
ridiculous. To this day, I still, I get emotional about it because um, I go back to where I grew up at and I grow, go back to where, where, uh, you know, I still keep in contact with certain friends and, um, you know, it's just a blessing to be able to do what I'm doing today. It's just a, a Absolutely. blessing from God. Amazing story. So where are you going from here? Like what's the goal over the next 12 to, you know, 12 months to three years? Um, for me, I think, uh, I, you know, it's just building more passive income is really, so I wouldn't have, don't have to stress in selling real estate all, every day. And, um, my goal is to move to Orange County okay, by cool. the end of the next year and cool. to, so to move out. Yeah. And real estate, I mean, obviously real estate is, you know, increase the sales and stuff like that, but that, that's, yeah. that, that's so, naturally so gonna you're, you're going to be heading to Orange County and increase the passive residual income. And then obviously increase your sales and what the target is. Mm-hmm. And have more fun, man. Have more fun and more vacations, more time with family. That's good. At the end of the yeah. day, that's what we're working for, at least for me, is uh, to spend more time with family and to create more memories and experience with them. Um, you know, I was uh, gone from them for so long, so now I cherish the time with them and, um, and just about experiencing more memories awesome, with them. Awesome, man. So what, what piece of advice would you give for the people watching live or the replayers listening on the podcast? Um, what, what would you give for advice to those folks? No matter where, I mean, no matter where they're at in their life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would just say, don't give up, you know, don't give up. If you have that vision and if it's something that you really want, um, you know, it will happen. And, 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 you know, we're all on our own journey. We're all on our own course. So it may happen now, it may happen five years down the road. You know, we're, we're all, we're all on this journey of life and, and, you know, I didn't give up, you know, how hard has it been? And it's still hard. It's still stuff. I'm still dealing with stuff in life right now. But, you know, I didn't give up. Um, I kept on believing and having faith that whatever it is that I was chasing and wanting at that time, that Did I was going to have it. Did it always come the way you thought it would? Like you set the intention to, to get to, to where you're at. Did it happen exactly how you thought it would? Or did it happen maybe differently? It happened differently for sure. <laughs> a lot and just be clear be clear on is what you want because you'll get stuff and it's not yeah, exactly what right? you wanted in life you know um so no no it, it didn't one of the come things the way i, talk I about inside it. of my mastermind is, is we set the flag on the hill with mm -hmm. where we're going and then we create the plan to get there and be okay with the fact that the plan is going to get fucked up like it's it's going to get fucked up and we yep. have to be flexible with that but that's where we have an opportunity to grow we either we either pull away and we go to a comfortable space and we stay small mm -hmm. and we stay average and we stay in this captivity or we just relax into it and we lean into it and we fucking trust the process and we don't know exactly how it's going to happen, but on the other side, it's fucking magnificent. Right? Like I could imagine that when you fucking found – Exactly. Like I can't think of a more amazing fucking gift than finding a book by Tony Robbins in prison because it's not like you were even looking for it. It was fucking, yep. hey, Danny, here's a gift. You read that exactly. book for the next – six yeah. years and now you're living overlooking the ocean making 250k a year that's fucking phenomenal dude i appreciate this story mm -hmm. dude you're Amazing. fucking awesome <laughs> so how can people connect with you send you referrals or learn more about you um i'll give my my number is uh 949 you can find me on facebook uh, cool. or instagram and tagged on this post game for you guys that are watching the replay on the podcast um, just go ahead and check out on my Facebook. You guys can connect with him. Let me know if you guys have any other questions. Danny, thank you so much for being here. We'll be in contact. We'll be talking to you in a couple of weeks on that review. All right, man. See ya. All right, man. Have a great Freaking phenomenal conversation. This is why I love doing the podcast because I love to hear and see people's stories because every person is just so freaking unique. Like here he is, Danny, 18 years of age. You know, he grows up smoking weed, grows up in gangs, grows up in violence, starts selling meth, gets arrested, gets sentenced for 10 years in prison. Are you fucking kidding me? I bet there's no one on this podcast that can even touch what he's gone through, right? 10 years in prison, discovers a book, Think and Grow Rich, discovers a book from uh, Tony Robbins and just creates his life. So no matter where you're at and no matter where you're at in your life, you have the ability to make a choice, to become aware, to shift your patterns and create your life. Your show, your time, your reality, you will not be denied if you make that choice. Notice he spoke about the hunger inside of him and he had to continually feed that. You can't just have this idea one time, 
Commitment starts today. Recommitment starts tomorrow. And you have to do that over and over again. Freaking love this podcast. One of my favorite ones. Make sure you guys go check out the Prospecting Alliance at prospectingalliance.com. If you have any questions about my personal mastermind, you go to the wgrmastermind.com and check out Fearless Agent Coaching and Training. See you guys later.